Okay, this is the final stage in the filter press test. I have been running the cell, which was at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, under running water in the sink to cool it down. It normally takes three, four, or five minutes to do that, so you can hold it by hand then, although it's a good idea to get some oven gloves or mittens or something like that uh, so you can handle this when it's a little bit hotter. But basically, I've taken the cell out of, out of the sink and put it in my trusty filter press cell body so that I have my inlet and outlet valve stem. The outlet side of the cell is down. I always want to relieve pressure on the inlet side of the cell. If I try to relieve pressure on the outlet side of the cell, the cell uh, filter press, uh, filter cake, and uh, consequent filter seals the cell up so I can't get rid of the pressure in the cell. So I always have to do it on the inlet side. And I'm going to attempt to do it without putting it back in the filter press. I may have to do that, but we'll see. And it's always a good idea. Yeah, there we go. It's always a good idea to have some kind of a cloth or something over it because you get, a lot of times you get the uh, liquid come flying out, um, mud particles. And most mud labs you can see on the ceiling where they have released pressure on the cell. So I have released pressure. I am now going to hand tighten it back up because I'm going to invert it and to keep the mud on the tabletop. I will now uh, release the stem. <clears throat> Not that I need to, it's just a habit that I've gotten into. And then I will remove the set screws and I'll do them just like I did. Um, I'll skip one and I'm just kind of breaking the tension on it right now. Um, I'll release these a little with a little more vigor in a minute. <clears throat> the idea is that these set screws are what is hold the only thing holding this cap in place, there's six of them, and <clears throat> the set screws need to be all the way in so that you don't get friction and have them welded inside the heating jacket. But at the same time, when you're releasing them, you want to watch that you don't get extrusion of the cell cap because that that means that you may have pressure trapped in the cell. But we hurt and saw pressure relief from the cell, so we know in this particular case, that's not, that's not a although I am getting uh, a little, another milliliter or so of mud coming out that was inside of the bow stem. So it looks like I've got my set screws are all out. I'm going to take my valve stem completely off. Now, I mentioned earlier about the cell cap removal tool and what a handy device that is. Well, here it is here. And I'm going to screw this part of it in where the valve stem goes. And screw it in just enough for the threads to catch. And then the lever part put in one of the cell stop holes, like thusly, and I just push down on it. Look at that. Very, very simple. And no hammering, no effort. The greased O-ring made all the difference in the world, and the cell cap removal tool made all the difference in the world. So that's a handy device that uh, cell is a separate item. Every mud lab should have one. Now, I want to retrieve my um, filter cake which is deposited on the filter paper. And I want to record that to the nearest 30 seconds of an inch. Um, filter cake is typically uh, described as uh, by appearance 
and that appearance is rubbery, firm, thick, soft, all those scientific type terms. So that's, that's what we're going to be looking at. I'll take a spatula and gently pull my filter medium out. Not much of a filter cake. Very small and not uniformly not uniformly placed. Um, I'll lay it down on a napkin so you can see that better. And uh, the um, The thickness is about, looks like uh, three milliliters, three millimeters of uh, filter cake uh, that's deposited. Now, to this, I want to gently rinse it off. And not much came off. <clears throat> and that is a true filter cake. It is pretty firm, rubbery, and that would be a desirable filter cake deposited on a wall of a hole, down, down hole. <clears throat> so that is the report I would turn in on a filter cake. Three millimeters, um, firm and rubbery. <clears throat> As far as the filtrate collected, I collected a total of 11 milliliters of liquid in, during the test. Seven of that was what we call spurt loss uh, that was collected at the seven and a half minute time. The balance was collected during the 30 minute period. So if I plug that into my formula for spurt loss, uh, that is two times the seven and a half minute collected minus a combination of the 30 minus the seven and a half minute and I make that out to be a um, spurt loss of uh, six so <clears throat> I have a spurt loss of six I double that uh, that would be 12 <clears throat> the <clears throat> um, no wait a minute uh, seven minus four that's a uh, three times two, so I have a spurt loss of six, correction, I have a spurt loss of six, and my total filtrate collected 11, since I'm using half the filtration area, half of the 7.1 square inches, I take that and I multiply my 11 milliliters times two, and that is what I would report as my HTHP uh, filtration uh, test results would be 11 uh, milliliters of filtrate collected. So at this point, I am done. The test is complete. Uh, from here, I will clean up. I will clean and dry the filter press jacket and sell thoroughly. I want to inspect the O-rings and make sure that they're all in good shape, that there's no dents, there's no flat spots on the O-rings. And had I gone above 300 degrees, which I didn't, but had I gone above 300 degrees, I would have replaced those O-rings because, as I mentioned earlier, they have to be replaced above 300 degrees Fahrenheit after each test. So basically, that's it. That's a complete HTHP filter press test run. I hope you can see that it's not particularly a dangerous test. It is a test that... Uh, requires some common sense and some knowledge and patience of what you're doing and if you take time to to do things right um, you can't get in trouble uh, you cannot get in trouble so again here is the filter cake measured uh, three milliliters with a total filtrate collected of 22 milliliters this is the HTHP filter press OFI part number 170-00 for the 115 volt OFI part number 17001 for the 230 volt. I thank you for listening.